On January 4, Novak Djokovic posted a photo from the airport. The unvaccinated tennis player was coming to the Australian Open with an exemption permission, he said. Tennis Australia confirmed the same day Djokovic had a medical exemption, approved after a rigorous review. That document had come a week earlier, on December 30, in the form of a letter from Tennis Australia's own medical officials and reviewed by a Victorian government panel, saying Djokovic was eligible for an exemption under ATAGI rules because he had recently recovered from the disease, after testing positive for COVID earlier that month, on December 16. Djokovic's positive test result is not in dispute, but its significance is. The player's lawyers note a target advice that says a confirmed COVID infection can warrant a temporary exemption for up to six months, while the government's lawyers note the exemption form says an exemption can only follow an acute major medical illness, and it's not clear Djokovic's case was serious. Djokovic had also filled out a Department of Home Affairs traveller declaration online, where he ticked a box saying he had a vaccine exemption. He received a reply on January 1, saying his responses indicated he could enter Australia without quarantining. But the government stresses it always reserves the right to interrogate the evidence on arrival. In the 24 hours before Djokovic's plane touched down, the exemption seemed to be in place. And Prime Minister, just quickly on Novak Djokovic, mm. um, how did he get an exemption to come into Australia and have we seen his vaccination passport? Well, that is a matter for the Victorian government. They have provided him with an exemption to come to Australia. And so we then act in accordance with that decision. Djokovic arrived in Australia just before midnight that evening. At 4.11am the next morning, he was notified his visa may be cancelled. And at about 7.42am, after some back and forth with officials, he was told the decision had been made. From the beginning of this morning's hearings, the government looked like it was in trouble, with Justice Anthony Kelly observing Mr Djokovic appeared to have done everything that had been asked of him by Australian officials, including in response to a Home Affairs document, before he travelled. Crucial to the outcome was that the government acknowledged it didn't give Djokovic enough time at the border after notifying him of the intent to cancel his visa to speak to others and respond fully. The judge ruled in Mr Djokovic's favour late this afternoon and awarded him costs. The government has already indicated it may move to cancel his visa again on different grounds. Former Deputy Secretary of the Immigration Department, Abel Rizvi, followed today's proceedings. Abel Rizvi, Novak Djokovic's case went to the way Border Force dealt with him at the border, not the underlying question of whether his exemption was valid. What did you make of the evidence about how border officials had behaved? Well, I, I, I think I'd take that question back a little further. I don't blame the border officials necessarily in this regard. We've got to remember that until and including on the 5th of January, the policy was that uh, the, the border force would accept exemption medical certificates from state governments, such as the Victorian government, at face value. We know that for two reasons. We know uh, the Prime Minister said so, on the 5th of January. And secondly, we know a number of people with medical exemptions, tennis players, actually entered Australia prior to the 5th without being having their visas cancelled by, uh, by border force. It was only until the 6th of January that the policy changed. So what happens next? What are the options open to the government? Well, uh, the government does have, as it said, the option of the minister personally intervening to cancel or, or issue a notice to cancel Mr Djokovic's visa, proceed to cancel, take him back into detention and then presumably wait for another appeal. Now, it can take that circuitous route again. I'm not sure it would be very wise. If I was still in the department, I would be encouraging the minister to not act in the heat of the moment. Think this through because losing another appeal of that sort would, be, would just look absolutely awful. Uh, a better strategy, in my view, would be for the government to sit down with Mr Djokovic and work out a way to minimise risks to public health whilst allowing Mr Djokovic to play in the Australian Open. Doing anything else, uh, such as being suggested, really, really does make us a laughing stock around the world. Is there any path open to the government now to walk away with its legal reputation intact? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about legal reputation, but certainly its competency is, is under serious question. Um, this was handled really poorly, and it goes to fundamental questions of design of visa systems. Uh, for 30 years, we have been, learned that 
good visa systems deal with these issues uh, at the point at which visas are granted. That is the point at which you ask Mr Djokovic the question, are you vaccinated? Show us your evidence of vaccination. If you have a medical exemption, show us the evidence of your medical exemption. Don't grant the visa until you are satisfied. Doing it at the airport is just utterly disastrous. Think about what the consequences would be when people movements ramp up and we keep doing these issues at the airport. Our airports would be in chaos. The cost to the taxpayer would be astronomical. Well, just finally, how many times would it be the case that something like this would happen at the airport? As the judge said, uh, Mr Djokovic uh, on paper had done everything that had been required of him before he left uh, to come to Australia um, to uh, satisfy the uh, questions about his medical exemption. Yeah. Um, I was responsible for public health criteria in the Department of Immigration for almost 10 years. I cannot remember an instance where we turned someone around at the airport on public health ground, grounds, except when, if or if, they had tuberculosis. Apple Rivsey, thanks so much for your time tonight. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.